Uh, this is a trip I'm wanting to do for a long time. I actually went back in November and I couldn't wait to get back. The thrill of catching bluefin tuna is second to none. Um, Last time I went to California it was last November. I uh, went chasing bluefin tuna. I had to come back. It was it was it was a sick trip. We limited out on tuna. I caught four pretty decent ones, all on the jig, which made it even better, um, especially for you know a guy coming from South Florida. We don't do bluefin tuna jigging much. We, our tuna don't get over 30 pounds, really. So to go over there and catch a fish that's, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, you know, it's a big deal for us. And, you know, anybody that's into fishing would definitely want to go back and do that again and again and again. You know, it's, uh, it's funny, watching the, uh, you know, on social media, social media always gets people hyped up. Watching social media and seeing everybody crushing it all week long leading up to the trip, I, I mean, I couldn't wait. I'm calling all my buddies like, oh, we're going over there, we're gonna crush it. Like, it's gonna be an insane trip. People are catching 100 pounders, 150 pounders. So in my mind, I'm going over there, I'm catching 150 pounders. Um, yeah, it didn't go like that. <laughs> Up on life bait, going back to what you know. Exactly. <laughs> I say we, we struggled to, to find the fish. The fish weren't in big, huge packs like you really want in big schools. They're more, you know, in little wolf pack type deals, you know, 10 fish, 15, 20 fish kind of coming through real fast, not really sticking around the boat, which is what you want. You want these fish coming in huge schools, hundreds of fish sticking around that boat. Um, and we just, we couldn't find that in the first two days. It was, uh, it was tough. I, I've never been on a trip like that. I don't think I've slept that much on a fishing trip in my entire life. Driving around, just trying to find fish. Um, yeah, it didn't, didn't go as planned as, as I wanted to. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty bummed out. I mean, so was everybody on the boat. You know, we, uh, you know, it's, what goes to your mind in times like that, you know, you, you wonder sometimes why you even came out there. You know, it's like, you, you spend all this money, all this time, you know, to go do something that you love, yes, but, you know, we love catching the fish, you know, not just driving around. So to, to go out there and drive around for, for all that time, not even getting a chance to really drop on any fish was, you know, it was it was tough mentally for sure. I mean, you know, sit there and you just watch the water go as you drive. You know, it's nothing nothing else really to do. You know, the big thing over there in uh, California when they're fishing for these tuna is bait. You know, they bait fish. Uh, you usually before you start heading out to the fishing grounds, they'll stop at a bait barge, they'll load up the well with a bunch of sardines and mackerel and whatever else they're using for that for that trip. And um, you, know, you get out there and you fly line baits, you use a sinker rig, get these baits down deep. None of that worked. Not none of it. I mean, um, at least the first two days. Once we got into that that third day, uh, that's when things started to click a little bit. You know, we started finding fish during the day, getting over schools, um, and fish started started coming over the rail. Actually, you know, and they started we started bringing in little eighty pounders, ninety pounders. One was maybe one twenty. I, I got to that point where you know I start seeing guys catch some fish on bait, and you know, I've been jigging for you know why not. I really wasn't jigging for two days straight. We didn't get a chance to, but um, you know, seeing guys catch them on bait and I'm jigging and not really getting the bite. Mind you, it's still daytime. Um, you know, I, I got to the point where I really wanted to try to, you know, drop that bait down, but I held true. I, I kept kept on it, kept on my jig, and um, you know, we kind of moved into the nighttime, um, and that's that's kind of when it all started happening. Right as I would say, right as the sun went down, maybe eight nine o'clock at night. Um, we got over a nice school and it was pandemonium. I mean, it was insane. It was fish after fish coming over the rail.
Yeah. Jigging, jigging, jigging. Dropping down, jigging. Drop down 400 feet. Fish was sitting about 300, 350. And I start ripping the jig. Ripping, ripping, ripping. Nothing. Um, drop back down again, about halfway. Drop back down. Start ripping again. Finally get a hit, but he didn't stick. Oh, come on. Two pumps later, he crushes it. Absolutely crushes it. Drag, drags uh, peeling out. I mean, it was it was insane. This is literally what I came back here for. That's what I thought about the last six months. You know, is feeling that drag, feeling that drag burn, feeling that drag run. Yeah. Yeah. seeing the what bloody decks really means Fit, decks covered with fish covered with blood it doesn't get any better than that that's why we come out there um uh you know two days straight of catching nothing to finally get that fish yeah. i could i could finally sleep at night you know I, I it's funny i tell people that for two days straight i've never had so much sleep in my life but really i wasn't sleeping much because on my mind all i could think about is man i just came all the way over here three thousand miles to catch nothing so to catch that fish, it, it made it all worth it for me. It really did. It was, uh, yeah, it's, it makes me want to go back again. I mean, I, I can't wait to go back again. All right, guys, so I just want to go over a little bit of the tackle that I was using while I was out there in San Diego. Um, for jigging, you know, first thing I want to start off with is a rod. I'm using a heavy jig rod, um, conventional style. That's that's the way to go over there. Don't, look, don't bring a spinner. Um, and then for the reel, uh, real strong reel, two-speed reel, um, accurate Boss Dauntless, 600 regular narrow. Uh, it holds a ton of line, more than I'll pretty much ever need for a fish like that. Um, I was running 80-pound J-Braid Multicolor. Uh, Multicolor is real important over there. Uh, reason why is when you get over these fish, the captain's gonna call out how deep these fish are. So they might be 300 foot, they might be 200 foot, they might be 500 foot. He's gonna call it out, and where this line comes into play is that this line is, uh, it changes colors every uh, 10 meters. So, you know, a little bit of math, I can count it out all the way down um, to you know, however deep I need to go. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll drop it a little bit past what he said, just so I can work the jig up through the zone rather than stopping it in the zone. Um, but, you know, e either way. So leader I was running, 140 pound monofilament. Um, you don't need fluorocarbon over there, especially when you're jigging at night, which is when most of the jigging happens. And you know, the fish, the fish are not line shy at all. There's guys fishing 200 pound, 250 pound, even 300 pound, getting bit all night long. Does It doesn't matter. Um, I have that connected to my braid with a PR knot, simple PR knot, and I finish it with a risotto finish, no, nothing crazy. Um, I do have a little bit of a longer arm on this, on my Accurate. It just gives me a little bit more torque when, when the fish gets stubborn and I can really get on them, um, especially when I'm bent over that rail. Uh, and then I had that all tied to Jig Pro Wavy. Pink and Glow, this is the one that got that fish. I ended up choosing this jig one because it was heavy, it's 450 gram, but the profile, I like that profile. It seems like those fish over there usually are keyed in on smaller profile baits. Um, I say that because one, the baits that we that the guys do use to, to catch the fish are, are usually you know fairly small, maybe four inches at best, four or five inches. That being said, 
when I say that they're keyed in on small baits, I see a lot of guys over there fishing what they would call like a tuna bomb. Something like this, tuna bomb. 16, 20 ounces, this one's 16 ounces. And they get smoked over there. This is actually a Jig Pro one for all you guys out there. They get smoked. So the hooks, I decided to go uh, top and bottom on these. Um, just because if the, if the when they hit it on the fall, which is what they do a lot of the times, I have a better hookup point. Uh, I'm running the Strateki 40 Fighters. Super sticky hooks. Fish looks at it, they're getting hooked. Um, and yeah, they're, they're plenty strong enough, plenty big enough. I have I have no doubts on these. This is something I would def definitely recommend if you're gonna go chase these fish over there. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey I just took you on. Um, please like, subscribe, follow the channel, all that good stuff. I'm gonna be in a lot more videos upcoming and I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks.